here at 530 everyone remembering a difficult time of Knoxville's history this week everyone tomorrow and Saturday August 30th and 31st marking 100 years since the start of what is considered Knoxville's worst race riot and the red summer and joining us now to talk about that moment in history we have Robert Booker with the Beck Cultural Exchange Center thank you so much for coming well, in it's my pleasure and honor walk us through what happened here 100 years ago 100 years ago a black man was accused of murdering a white woman. He was taken to the Knox County Jail. A mob formed to string him up, but the sheriff knew they were coming and snuck him down to Chattanooga. When the mob couldn't find him in the county jail, they tore up the jail, drank up all the confiscated whiskey, marched back down to Vine Street, the heart of the black business community, and swore to kill every black person they saw. A frightening time in our history that a lot of people may not really have studied or know a lot about. Well, that, that's right. It, it's one of those times that we'd rather not have had in Knoxville. But there were some two dozen cities across the country that had race riots. I'm not sure ours was a race riot in that sense as what happened in other places. But these people wanted to take revenge on this guy who was actually innocent. And, and created quite a, con quite a lot of confusion. If people want to learn more, I need to point out, you've written a, a book about it, and, and people can buy this at the at Beck Center. That's right. It's available at the, at the Beck Center, The Heat of a Red Summer, which describes that incident in complete detail. A a and I understand that this was kind of one of those moments that was a catalyst in the civil rights movement as well. So things can be learned from this, obviously. No, no question about it. The NAACP had just been formed prior to the race riot. And I think people began to think, what have we done? You know, we, we created a problem that we shouldn't have created. And I think it made be for better re relationships. As we mark, if you will, this 100 year mark since these riots, what do you think about how far <coughs> Knoxville has come and, and what should people really be reflecting on right now? Well, we've come a long way in terms of the civil rights movement to desegregate everything basically from riding the bus wherever we want to ride it. Uh, we, we've had school desegregation. So we've, we've come a long way, but we still have a ways to go. There are still some people who are shaky in their feelings and understanding about race relations that and we still need to make some improvements, yes. Where would you like to see us go? What would you like to see people do to kind of help improve that here in our community? Well, I'm not sure what people can do, except to be honest with themselves. Mm -hmm. We've had meetings forever about the problems we still have, but they're never solved because it's us goody-goodies who get together and meet, but the people sh who should be reached or never reached. <laughs> Unfortunately, hopefully yeah. they take advantage, read this book, learn about this 100 year history right now. And Robert, we appreciate you coming in. Thank oh, you so my much. Pleasure. Thank you. Bo. All right. Thank you, Kristen. And if you'd like to learn more about the race riots of 1919, the Carpetbag Theater is hosting a production two weeks from now, looking back at the Red Summer. This is a commemoration of the 100th anniversary. The Carpetbag Theater is saying this is, quote, a story we cannot allow to die. Now, there are four showings of their production Thursday, September 12th through Sunday the 15th at the Bijou.